Welcome to the third and final game for the review session. And that is Ninjin Clash of Carrots. All right, so this game is... I'm not exactly sure how to classify this. Um, other than, like, quasi-endless runner. Yeah, it's a, sort of a beat-em-up also. Yeah, like, because it's got the... Me it's got the mechanics and gameplay of a endless runner, but and um, there is a lot of running in this game. Yeah, but you're you're a ninja. Uh, as you go through the stages, you are running except for like a few boss fights. Mm hmm. And though, and these are levels, actual levels. Like, um, mind you, yes, there is an endless mode, and. That's framed in a very odd way, as they call it Oni TV. Like it, yeah, it's it's, a, it's it's a guy running an endless mode television show. Mm -hmm. And you know your your goal of the end, you know, it's like is to get as far as possible. You know that operates, you know, like a pretty typical endless runner. Like now, um. Uh, genre and mechanics aside, this game is um, exceedingly good. If I'm being honest. Like, <laughs> I was surprised. Like, you know, I was surprised because um, honestly, the graphics, um, you know, are pretty typical you know, pixel art. I hesitate to say retro style because, you know, usually if you're going for a retro style, you, you're aiming for something specific. Um, I guess sixteen bit, maybe Legend of the Mystical Ninja here. Uh, that's all I got. A mm. little bit. You know, but you know, like on the store page, you know, they they got a gif of what you can do in the game, like, and that is a lot of sword dashing. Because, uh, yeah, um, your goal is to rescue the carrots from the evil shogun. Yeah, they 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 at the beginning of the game they. The Shogun's, I think it's his son, raids your town and steals all the carrots. And you're a village of carrots and apparently, or a village of rabbits and apparently one fox because that's what the second playable character is. Uh, because, of so. course. Yeah. And you do this by, well, plowing through the enemy armies. And, you know, once again, th this was an unintentional theme. But a theme nonetheless is we've got um, mobile-like games that are uh, pretty simple. Only no, this game has enough yeah. controls that it would be rough to do mobile. I think. Yeah, I was about to say um, only this game has a lot more depth than um, the other games we reviewed, or you know, a, a typical endless run. I mean, it's not yeah. that it's not that deep. But it's it's got more going for it than just um, smack and dash. Like, yeah, you have you can attack, you can dash, you can do a dash attack, and also you can use your right stick or possibly some kind of mouse thing. I don't know if you can play this very well with the keyboard uh, to shoot a ranged attack in 360 degrees, and it's done by. With an analog stick, it's done by flicking the stick in a direction. If you hold the stick in a direction, uh, it will aim. Right. And then you let go, and it throws it. Yeah. And um, the, the tactical key here is in the weapons, the actual weapons you get. Because yeah, every so often an enemy will drop a box, and you get a new weapon from that. And also in between stages, you can uh, trade in the carrots that the enemies drop to a corgi who runs the shop to buy new ranged or melee weapons. And also um, power upgrades, like more health, more stamina. Stamina is another key component here because um, anytime you, you do a dash, anytime you do uh, a ranged weapon, you're going to drain your energy. Yeah, and, dash, dash attack, and ranged weapon all drain stamina. And also advanced tactics. When you get um, some of the higher tier swords, will also drain your stamina, and fuck those swords, for the most part, because you know what happens if you don't have enough stamina uh, for those swords, you can't even swing them. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, a large, there's a large variety of weapons. Um, I'm not uh-huh. gonna lie, most of them aren't exactly what you'd call good. Yeah. Uh, uh, there I'm are like, like four or f- maybe five different categories. There's normal swords. There's knives. There's spears. There's heavy weapons. Um. Spears are thrust a long way forward and are good for dash attacks. Swords swing pretty quickly. Knives, you kind of stab quickly in front of you. And uh, heavy is a single slower strike. Um, I found that a lot of the heavy weapons don't have higher enough power to accommodate for their slower attacking. And the uh, knives usually don't have fast enough attack to compensate for their complete lack of range. Yeah. Those are only some of the considerations. One of the secret um, best considerations is um, critical percentile. Like, if you get a weapon that can do, like, 40% crit, crit, um, equip that. Mm-hmm. Like, it's probably going to have some other uh, issues, but uh, when you crit an enemy, you basically do double damage. Yeah, I think range is kind of important, though, too. Like, one yeah, of the I'm, first I'm ones I got saying... is it's called the Fat Sword or something, and it's a sh- sh- mid or short range heavy sword with a high crit rate. Yeah. Also, um, the way the weapons are swung is another thing. Mm-hmm. Because some of them do the overhead thing, some of them go straight, for example. Now, like yeah, I said, a lot of that depends on what the weapon type is. Yes. So. Yeah, there, there's a lot of detail bubbling under the surface. And that's the big thing that separates this game from the other games we've reviewed this session. It's like, um, you know, with those games, what you saw on the surface is all you get. This game, no. They, like, there's actual tactical considerations. Like, um, that being said, this game is not without fault. And probably the biggest one is the... Um, you can only forward attack unless you're dashing. I'm like... Yeah, or you're in one of the few segments where you are not running. Then you can actually turn around. Yeah. And, yeah, that that's just kind of uh, cheap. I, yeah, you can, you can dash attack backwards, but otherwise when an enemy is behind you, you have to, like either wait for them to move forward or dash backwards through them in order to attack them normally. Yeah. You can also use your ranged attack backwards, but yeah. also, the ranged attack is weaker. Yeah. Also, um, late game kind of really falls apart because the stage gimmicks um, go into just being horribly, horribly unfun. I, I won't spoil what, what goes on there, but yeah, I found more frustration than enjoyment from what was going on there. But um, the, these are quibbles in the grand scheme of things. Mm-hmm. Now, um, I'm also pleased to report that um, the music in this game is also uh, rather good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not coincidentally, this is also the only game we're reviewing this session that has a soundtrack available for purchase. Um yeah, so the soundtrack is, um, how do I put this? Stereotypically Asian, Japanese? Like, um, in a sense? Uh-huh. I'm like, um... I had the music turned down pretty low when I was playing, so I can't help too much. Yeah, well, it's like... I'm not exactly sure what the instruments are, but it's very invoking... Um, like the stuff that's in Kung Fu fighting and turning Japanese and stuff. Yeah, ninja movies and all that stuff. Like, and it's very high-octane, you know, um, very fast. Um, and it is something I would listen independently of the game. Mm-hmm. You know. Just maybe not while driving. Might might end up might might end up getting pulled over for driving too fast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so word of no, uh, notation here, we did not get a chance to do the online multiplayer. Uh, yeah, it has. I th- it has 
local and online multiplayer, I believe. Yes. Um, Galax bought his copy. I... Yeah, but I didn't get around to getting it until a little bit before show, like earlier today. So, so that I was, only had, yeah, yeah, that that was not enough time to test the the, the online multiplayer. Like, I apologize for this, but I, well, it's really more of the fault of the um, provider of codes because you know if you want your multiplayer um, segment tested, you got to give us the uh, proper amount of codes. You Who's can't choose which character you play as even in single player mode. Right. Though I don't uh, think but, it ever made a difference. Right. So it's there one of those, it's just a skin things. Right. You can have two players, and it does help a little, because there are a lot of times where you get clumps of enemies that it would be way more convenient to have uh, more than one people right. stabbing at at once. Yeah. Also worth um, noting are the rainbow carrots. Like, so... Yeah, what was up with those? I didn't get that far. I'm like, okay, so after getting uh, far enough in the game, the, uh, there will be a uh, not-so-secret night shop open where you can use the rainbow carrots to buy different masks. Um, for your, Which are, like, skins? Basically. They, you know, they are various aesthetical things. They do not affect gameplay at all. Like, um... And... There are, you know, there are a lot of things to collect in this game, if nothing else. Not just Oh, masks. you do have to, when, when, when the enemies drop stuff, you do have to actually get kind of close to it to pick it up. Mm -hmm. Except at the end of a wave. Yep. And... Hmm. Uh, pricing. Uh, so the game is, at least on Steam... Clocking in at uh, fifteen dollars. Um, of note, it is on sale right at this moment in time. Uh, I think this lasts until Tuesday. Like, uh, but you can get it for twenty-five percent off, uh, eleven dollars twenty-four cents. Uh, the downloadable content is the original soundtrack, five dollars. Or, and this is the recommendation I'm going to make. You can get the bundle, which clocks in at, well, um, regular price is $19.98, $20. It's, go, it's off 31%, so that's $13.79. Yeah, that is the, uh, you should buy this. And if you're listening to this when the sale is going on, or a future sale, buy this now. That is only like 2 uh, two dollars, two dollars fifty above mm -hmm. the regular price. So, why you know, why not? You know, even if the soundtrack is only five dollars, right? So, and it's pretty not, good music. So, yeah, you know, as far as the price itself, um, you know, right now, you know, um, either price, get it right now. Um, regular price, uh, ditto as well. Um, in spite, you know, in spite of the simple premise and all that stuff, there's enough meat here. There's enough content to justify fifteen dollars, even twenty dollars. Like, mm -hmm. it's like, <clears throat> even if you complete the main game, uh, well, you've got everything else to collect. And yeah, there, there, are, you can get uh, rankings of up. It's not super hard on most levels to get an A rank but you can get up to an S rank. Yeah, I've gotten a lot of S ranks. Like, getting an S rank on some levels is a lot more difficult than it appears. But, you know... Oh, yeah, S ranks are actually a challenge. A ranks are not super challenging. Yeah, point of order is, um, there's a lot to keep you occupied here. Like, and, you know... I, like I said, this is probably my surprise of the year. Um, because I yeah, thought this game... The name Ninja and Cash... <laughs> Clash of Carrots is not exactly something that's going to... Uh, yeah. Uh, engender a ton of confidence in the quality of the game. It sounds like kind of... <laughs> ish or App Store bait, but honestly, it's a pretty good game. And yeah. I recommend trying it. 
Yeah. It was like um, 10 point scale, 7 out of 10. Like, you know, a really solid game. You know, n not best of the year or anything, but um, you won't go wrong with this on any platform. And yeah, this game is out on pretty much any modern system. You know, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, um, Steam. Uh, if you've got one of those, you can access this game. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you should probably do so. I'm not, sh I'm not sure if the game is on sale on the consoles, but, you know, if it is, pick it up. You're probably not going to get the soundtrack. That's usually a you can you know a, a PC. Yeah, mo most consoles not as good at the whole uh, being used as a music player thing. I'm like, yeah. But um, with that in mind, any final thoughts on Ninjin here? Uh, ah. It's very cute. The weapons are weird. <laughs> uh, one of like the starting weapons is a. It's a, actually a dagger type weapon, but it's as long as a spear and it's shaped like a carrot and it does not do much damage, but it's funny. <laughs> All right, then. So that'll about do it for this installment of the Fragments of Silicon Reviews um, coming up on the week ahead. Um, no Tuesday interview this week. Uh, as mentioned on Wednesday, we had something potentially lined up, but it fell through. Um, so it goes, um, but on Wednesday, September 12th, uh, we'll be having John Pickett of Manga Gamer back for his probably 20th, 25th time. We literally lost count a few years ago. Like, um, but there's a lot to be talking about. Um, you know, the latest developments with Steam, um, their first original project is about to be released this month, according to Steam. Like, um, that band, um, Maidens of March in game just got released on GOG. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maidens of Michael. Yeah, there we go. Maidens of Michael. It's been a long time since I actually played that. Mm -hmm. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, whole lot of stuff going on with the manga gamer sphere. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, hopefully you are as well. Um, also be sure to tune in, um, on the days, what what is it, Tuesday and Thursday um, for the Final Fantasy XIV stuff? Mm -hmm. All right, so um, until next time, I wish you good gaming.